hey, it's been a hot minute. I know I should have opened this box like a week and a half ago, but life has been busy and crazy uh, as usual. Um, I've just been busy tattooing a lot, uh, lots of drawing in my spare time, trying to fit painting in. Um, <clears throat> just a few days ago, one of my rats passed away, so I've been dealing with that. Um, but one thing, before I open this, before I open this, the laboratory box, I, real quick, I just, I learned something about myself, like, within the last, I don't know, month or two, and then when I look back at my whole life, I, this is how I've always reacted, like, I don't know, I don't know if it's a good thing, a bad thing, positive, negative, like, there's love-hate about it, but I want to know if anyone else ever experiences this or if they if any of you do this too um let's say in the heat of a moment let's say uh let's say you work um hypothetical let's say you or work or at home let's say someone you know that you live with or you work with let's say there's a kitchen involved and there's knives and let's say some, a slip of the knife someone hurts themselves um do you do you freak out and panic or are you calm and collected and you can, you know, you can like almost, almost methodically like handle everything like smoothly with no, no worry, no freak out, um, nothing. Um, I've learned about myself that in the heat of a mo in the moment, whether it's being, if I'm given bad news, um, or if uh, I witness an accident or if there's something spur of the moment that is happening that is bad um i feel like a normal person would like freak out panic and and maybe they'd be able to make like a, a good decision or like know what to do but kind of like shaking and like kind of going a little crazy um i've learned about myself that i'm very calm and i can think logically and i'm almost too accepting of what is currently happening kind of like okay this is happening or that happened and I'm being made aware of it okay what what we what do we need to do okay let's do this let's do a b c okay did all that everything's taken care of you know it's all good but give it a few hours and all the feelings the panic the anxiety um, the worry I feel like all the chaotic shock I like the shock wears off it's almost like I'm numb at first and then later it all hits me and I don't know if I like that or not like I guess if I was in a place of work and if somebody broke in while I was there I might I would probably be very calm in a very obscure weird way and the fear and panic would hit me way later and I don't I almost sometimes think I wish it would just hit me in the beginning so then later I can be like more calm because I don't like being super because like at first I'm like wow I took that very well like I'm really surprised at myself like I'm I'm okay but then a few hours later I'm like okay maybe I'm not really okay <laughs> and then that's when I lose it is later and so I've just kind of always been that way. It's like if a kid, it, kids are playing in front of me and one falls and hurts themselves, I don't, I wouldn't um, panic. Like I feel like my mom would like freak out and like run and like to the rest. Not that I wouldn't run to the rescue, but I might calmly, quickly go over there and be like, are you okay? And you know, because I feel like if I'm to panic, that would make the kid panic. Like, for example, too, this actually did happen. Um, I had my brother and his girlfriend and their kids over. And my niece, she's three. And she really wanted to see what it looked like in our garage. So I op we have the, the a door that goes from our kitchen into the garage. I opened it. She, before I could even say watch your step oh she found the step you should watch out for and she kind of tripped over her own feet and I felt so bad like but 
she was a little too quick <laughs> to get out the door but she tripped she didn't cry she just was like ow my feet and like I very calmly like I was like oh no are you okay just calmly I didn't freak out and panic um like my mom probably would have done <laughs> and I don't know she very if I was calm she was calm and then it was okay let's look at your feet together and we looked at her feet and there's no blood if you want a band-aid for comfort she's like no I'm okay and okay but you know later and in the moment like I felt really bad but I'm like okay let's make sure are you okay let's be calm together and check this out and then later I felt really guilty because I'm like I should have like said something before I opened the door you know all that stuff comes later and then like the, I really do hope her feet are okay and just worry, worry, worry is later. In the moment of any incident, whether it's an incident or like bad news or I don't, whatever, um, or confrontation, I'm just very, um, to me, I'm almost disturbed at how calm I am and almost surprised at how accepting I am at the beginning. But then later, but that now that I'm aware more aware of this now than ever when this does happen I'm dreading hours from now because it's gonna hit me <laughs> but then at least I'm like trying to mentally prepare myself so anyway I guess what I'm trying to say is like or I'm what I'm trying to ask is like does anyone else experience this because <laughs> um, there are some that um, experience this but they don't get that anxiety stress panic like it doesn't catch up with them later some are just cool the whole time or so they appear <laughs> um maybe it's days later um i guess sometimes i don't really know when it's gonna hit but i just i don't know so when you know my when i've had pets pass away like my rat recently passing away at first i'm accepting i'm okay and then it's later later it hits me and i don't like the later don't <laughs> so it just yeah or even like if I have a weird interaction with a person I don't feel super weird about it until I process start to actually process and then later I look back and I'm like that was really messed up like why was I so calm <laughs> so anyway that's what I was trying to get at just you know I guess it doesn't matter how old you get you're just always going to be learning learning just in general and then also learning about yourself and I do like learning more about myself and what makes me me and understanding me and why I am the way I am and also how I work because then I can kind of explain to myself this is why you are the way you are I don't know I guess psychology is kind of fascinating in that sense but anyway <laughs> let's open the laboratory uh, box number 105 I'm also a little tired so apologies <laughs> If I'm a little meh, meh. Oh, well, that didn't work. Go. <laughs> okay. So, oh, it's a bone patch. I want to put that like on a hoodie, like on the arm. That would be cool. That's really cool. I like that. I do have a a hoodie that I have um, that I cut like graphics off of T-shirts, and I have a lot of the spooky box patches on it on this hood. I just like. It's like a collage. Um, actually, let me go get it. Okay, this is it. I've got, you know, Backstreet Boys. I went to the Backstreet Boys concert, like, a few, like, years ago. So, I, the t-shirt was fine, but it just didn't fit me great, so I cut the graphic off. I mean, I've got everything. <laughs> everything that was a t-shirt <laughs> that I've worn, like, in the past is on here. But here's, like, you know, a spooky box patch another one um this one spooky box um and, and others too um i think this was a spooky box i'm pretty sure I think this one was too anyway yeah and some were not but i have there's a lot on here <laughs> but it's just i don't know so if you don't know what to do with your um some t-shirts <laughs> Uh, you just sew them all on a hoodie, uh, and it's kind of fun. It's a pain in the butt, though, to sew on sleeves. <laughs> it's really tricky, but I did it. 
But anyway, that's that hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's where this bone patch will end up. Um, okay. All right, here's the paper. Oh, Fizz Whiz, super loud popping action. Cola flavor, so like Pop Rocks, but it's super loud. That's kind of scary. I lo look how menacing <laughs> this little like wizard dude is. He's like the one like brother of those like Rice Krispie Treat people. I don't know if they're brothers, but he's like the cousin that wished to be a part of that little group. And he's like, fine, you're gonna do Rice Krispie Treats. I'm gonna do Fizz Whiz and they're gonna be loud. <laughs> Ooh, and a little blue sucker. Oh, sometimes I miss my hair being blue. But it was such a pain, like, to maintain. That's, that could be a t-shirt. Such a pain to maintain. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I like these. Look at these earrings. Oh, those are pretty. Those are cool. I am obsessed with Erlenmeyer flasks. I have a collection of them, and I recently got one at an antique store, too. I'd like to put spider plants in them because um, the roots fill up the hole. Yeah, it's really cool. I like beakers and sciency bottles. Those are cool. Um, oh, I love these. These are lightning bolt earrings. Oh, they're hard to see. Those are so, here. They're hard to see. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, those would look cool as like the second hole. Oh, those are cool. Oh, thank you, Spooky Box, for making all the jewelry silver. I am a silver person. I love you for silver. Well, and since I opened those, let's open these so we can see them better. Oh. You know what? I've been getting a lot of people leaving comments on random videos that I've posted within the last year. And they're all people who used to watch like all my paranormal videos. And then they rediscovered me or refound me. And they're like, I used to watch you when I was in school. And I'm like, oh my god. Um, so I'm glad that some of you are finding me again. Um, yeah, these are cool. Speaking of paranormal, I had the weirdest experience at the tattoo shop a few weeks ago. Maybe I'll do a separate video for that. Let me know. I, I've i never seen this before. But anyway, yeah, it happened. Um, this is cute. This looks like notebook paper. But it's an Anatol- You know, I never got to dissect a frog in school. I never did that. And I really wanted to. <laughs> I was probably one of the only kids that was like, or one of the few that was like, oh, get to dissect frogs? I didn't get to dissect anything. The only thing I got to dissect was a cow eyeball. And they said, they gave us the dullest razors, which I get it. It was seventh grade. And, and you don't really want to give a classroom full of like, I don't know, 15 to 20 seventh graders really sharp razors <laughs> to cut open cow eyeballs. But they were like, if you can cut open the, the eye a certain way, you can get the lens out and you can keep the lens and take it home. I wanted it so bad. It didn't work. And there was like two kids that were, that made, that they, they did it somehow. And I was so upset. But then I'm like, how do you, how do you take it home? And how do you keep it? Like, surely there, it's probably, I want to know. If you ever did that and you got to keep the lens, like the, the little lens in the eye, do you still have it? Did it stink? Did it decompose? Like, what's the reality of being able to keep that? Anyway, <clears throat> I think in high school, there were some classes where uh, you got to dissect baby pigs. I never got to do that. I never got to do anything fun. Never. So anyway. <laughs> It's still cool. And I don't know. I don't know if I feel like I want to dissect a frog now. Uh, I don't I don't know if I feel like it, but back then I did. Seventh grade me really was sad to not do that. <laughs> oh, this is really <laughs> uh timing isn't great with this one, but it's not Spooky Box's fault. It's my fault. <laughs> it's a rat. <laughs> All I can do is laugh. Because 
the day after my one of my rats passed away um which uh she passed away like friday friday morning this last friday morning um it was the that next day i was scrolling on instagram and i got an ad for an event at an oddity shop in portland for a rat taxidermy and i was like <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not good that's all i could do is laugh so i look at the all i can do is laugh this doesn't make me sad <laughs> and what's even more morbid i have to find humor in this <laughs> what's more morbid is my rat that passed away recently which she was all white <laughs> It, this is hilarious. It's just hilarious. This is when I look at the universe and I'm like, you're a jokester. <laughs> it, so I know probably, see, this is maybe I'm just like messed up <laughs> because I feel like a normal person <laughs> would be like, oh my God, this is so sad. I can't look at it. Oh, I'm going to look at it. And I'm gonna be like, this is ironic. Like, this is a joke. Universe, right? It's not Spooky Box's fault. <laughs> Spooky Box said no. It's fine. I just find this hilarious. Um, maybe I have a weird way with death. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I, I probably, when my pets die, I kind of suppress it a little. My sadness will come out eventually. And then, but what's really different and nice this time around is I still have one of my rats. It makes it a lot easier because <laughs> I still have one that I can give all the attention to and cuddle with. And oh boy, she's getting all the attention. I also feel kind of sad or worried because she's alone but she's actually doing great um despite being alone and I don't know if it's because these two rats really never got along like they never slept and cuddled they rarely slept together like and cuddled rarely if anything they fought over everything all the time fought they the other rat the one that passed away stole all the other one's treats like and then when they come out to play they would just fight and in all honesty out of all the rats I've had I've only ever had one this was the first time I've had well this is like the third time I've had two the first time the first two times that I had two rats I had to separate them because they never got along and so people were very adamant people gave me a hard time with the last rat that I had before these two because I only had one and I was given such a hard time on the internet so I rarely posted about her on the internet because people were like, you need to, like, you need to, like, it's law. And I'm like, she's doing fine. Like, I've only had issues when I've had two rats. And then when I went to adopt the last two, I was searching all over for breeders. And the one breeder that I almost got rats from, that's a whole nother story. Um, she was asking me about my rat history and so I told her about my last one, I only had one. And she was like, how come you only had one? And I'm like, because two never works out. She's like, well, you really need two. And so, so I did what the people said. And this last time I got two and they still didn't get along. They fought all the time. They didn't like each other. They, they, you know, they weren't like attacking, but it was just like, they bickered like siblings. They didn't cuddle. They weren't super attached. Um, they stole food from each other. Um, they picked on each other and mostly the one that's alive now she was the one who got picked on the most the other one was like i'm dominating i'm gonna dominate and i own this cage anyway so in a weird morbid way my current rat that's still that's still here she's fine she's thriving i still i worry more um but she gets all the treats all the attention so i don't know i <laughs> everyone tells me get to Every time I do, it doesn't work out this time. I mean, it worked out because I didn't have to separate them. Like this was the first time I didn't have to, but it's just, I don't know. I'm like, do we get to, I know they're social animals, but it, like, I feel like, I feel like this time around, I got two for my sake. So that way when one passes the other one, I, I have the other one to make it easier, <laughs> which means it's gonna be really difficult when she goes <laughs> so let's not talk about that <laughs> she may even live another year she was much healthier than the other one anyway so anyway rats <laughs> oh it's it's just funny it's funny anyway and this is this just got even better you guys this got better 
this just got so much better. <laughs> it, <laughs> just wait, wait, take a breath. <laughs> it's a dead rat. <laughs> Oh, this is when I feel like something's wrong with me, but I just, I love this about the universe because we can, I can find humor in it. I think this is great. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I have a more, more, whoa, a, a morbid sense of humor. There we go. <laughs> I, I love it. I, this is great. This is great. I, and I'm not joking. Like, it was harder, like, when I got the taxidermy class, the, the rat taxidermy class one, I was like, okay, that was too soon. That was, like, the day, the next day. This, it's been a few days now. This. <laughs> Is it a bell? <gasps> it's a bell. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, you gotta find humor in it. Otherwise, there's, you're not really living. <gasps> this is a bag. Okay, I'm a sucker for lime green. Ooh. Why does this remind me of my childhood? Do you see all everything moving? <gasps> oh my god, that is so cool. Too bad it wasn't filled with like a gel or a liquid. I'm sure that'd be too shitty though. Ship. <gasps> I love this. I love the green. Ooh. This is really cool. Oh my god, I love everything on here. Oh, this is good. And I'm a sucker for bags. I'm a sucker for bags. Okay, favorite things. Okay, in a morbid way, these are my favorite. <laughs> because they made me laugh. They made my day. It makes a great story. <laughs> um, and I love this. I love this bag. Oh, and the earrings. So it would be like... In a morbid, for my dark humor, this, <laughs> these, <laughs> the dead rats. Um, and then I like this the most, and the light, lightning bolt earrings. Because I'm a sucker for bags and jewelry. Okay, what's your favorite? And, um, I'm sorry if you don't enjoy my morbid sense of humor with a pet that has passed. But it's how I cope. <laughs> it's how I deal. Um... It's fine. It's fine. I'm like the little dog in that is it in that bus that's like it's fine. Everything's fine and everything's on fire. <laughs> because like I don't know. What is the point of panic? I guess this it goes back to you know my initial reaction to an incident or whatever. There's no point in holding on to panic or fear. Like I don't like living in fear. I don't like living with anxiety and stress. I mean, we, I feel like we all do regardless, but if I am able to just kind of let it go a little and just laugh it off, try, if that helps me move on, then that helps me move on. And I think that's, you know, I don't want to stay stuck in a feeling that is not going to benefit me mentally. And so, um, most of the time when I have a pet that is passing, um, like, I will say, I had adopted a bearded dragon, like, almost a, almost a year ago. It passed away, um, a few months ago, and immediately I was like, I need to go to the pet, a pet store and see some alive. And then I came home with one, so that happened. <laughs> so then I have a bearded dragon now, too. Um, and so I just have a weird, morbid way of dealing with pet loss and... I don't know, just most of the time when I have a pet that passes, I need to see one like it alive. Um, sometimes I come home with a goldfish, sometimes I come home with another bearded dragon. Um, I do feel though, most of the time when I have a severe loss, especially from a rat, like probably when this, the one that I have, whenever she decides to go, I will need a break. Cause that's what happened um, like years ago with one rat. It, it was such a, it felt horrific how she went, um, it was sudden, it was fast, um, had to go have her put down, um, it was traumatic, and I probably didn't get another rat for, like, three, four years, 
Um, but then my last one before these two, it was like, as soon as she was gone, I was so, it was like, I was so sad that I needed a new one. <laughs> but I took time. I waited like, I don't know, six to eight months. <laughs> it's not a long time. Um, but I was, then I was ready. And then can't believe like, it'll be three years, uh, this December that I've had these rats. And I'm just really sad that this, the one that passed recently didn't make it, um, but it was fine. It's fine. It happens. It's the cycle of life. They don't live forever <laughs> or as long as we all would like. Um, but I do feel like it would probably be harder if they live longer. Cause like, you know, I feel for people who have dogs and cats that live, God, some of them live like 20 years. And like, that's like a purse. That's like a person. Like, that's a literal member of your family. I mean, all pets are members of families. I don't want to dig myself a hole and someone get offended. But you know what I mean. It's like, I feel like it's harder the longer you've had a pet. Um, it doesn't mean the ones you've had for a short time don't matter or don't aren't as meaningful. But you know what I mean. It's like, you basically accustom your whole life after 20 years or 15, 13. I mean, my first dog I had for, I think, 13 15 years, somewhere like that. Anyway, we all mourn different. Some of us find humor. <laughs> I have to find humor. <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's life and I don't want to hold on to it and it's sad and I still miss all my past pets. Um, but, you know, it's good to go, I don't know, go to a pet store where you can see them or go to the zoo you know, just see animals thriving. Anyway, I think that's it for today. Um, I'm gonna go chill before I go to work for the day, but maybe in a separate video, I'll share a paranormal, my most recent paranormal experience. Cause I know it's, it's been years since I've had anything happen. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember the last time I had a paranormal vlog. So if you guys want that, let me know. Okay. <laughs> Hug a pet for me if you have one and uh, yeah, comment all the things. Anyway, <laughs> okay, bye.